Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question on momentum and impulse. Calculating the velocity of a trolley after it takes part in a collision and calculating impulse from a forced time graph. Here's a question from the 2015 CFE Higher paper. A student sets up an experiment to investigate collisions between two trolleys on a long horizontal track. The mass of trolley X is 0.25 kilograms and the mass of trolley Y is 0.45 kilograms. The effects of friction are negligible. In one experiment, trolley X is moving at 1.2 meters per second to the right and trolley Y is moving at 0.6 meters per second to the left. The trolleys collide and do not stick together. After the collision, trolley X rebounds with a velocity of 0.8 meters per second to the left. Finally, we're asked to determine the velocity of trolley Y after the collision. So let's visualize what's happening. The two trolleys move towards each other and collide. Trolley X then rebounds to the left and we have to find what happens to trolley Y's velocity. To do this, we use the conservation of momentum. Momentum is a vector, and since we have trolleys moving both from left to right and right to left, we'll have to decide which direction is taken as positive. We call this sign convention. For this question, we'll take the initial direction of trolley X as positive. Let's give ourselves more space to work out the answer. Now there's lots of information in this question, so the first thing I'll do is note it down carefully using our sign convention. Trolley X has a mass of 0.25 kilograms, and trolley Y has a mass of 0.45 kilograms. We'll call these masses MX and MY. Next, we're told the initial velocities of the trolleys. Trolley X is moving to the right at 1.2 meters per second, and trolley Y is moving to the left at 0.6 meters per second. Applying our sign convention, this is taken as negative 0.6 meters per second. You can see that I'm using the symbols ux and uy as the initial velocities of trolleys x and y. The velocity of trolley x after the collision, vx, is taken as negative 0.8 meters per second because it's moving to the left. Our job is to calculate the final velocity of trolley y, vy, after the collision. As I said before, we do this by using the law of conservation of linear momentum. That is, the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision, in the absence of external forces. Here the two trolleys are moving separately before the collision, so the total momentum before the collision is equal to the initial momentum of trolley X, MX, UX, plus the initial momentum of trolley Y, MY, UY. This is equal to the total momentum after the collision. Again the trolleys are moving separately after the collision. So the total momentum after the collision is the final momentum of trolley X, MX, VX, plus the final momentum of trolley Y, MY, VY. Now we can substitute our values into this equation, like so. If we multiply each term in brackets, we get this. Adding 0.2 to both sides, we get 0.3 plus negative 0.27 plus 0.2 is equal to 0.45 VY. Adding the numbers on the left hand side gives us 0.23 is equal to 0.45 Vy. To find our answer, all we have to do is divide both sides by 0.45. So Vy is equal to 0.23 divided by 0.45 equals 0.51 meters per second. Notice that this number is positive. So using our sign convention, it must be 0.51 meters per second to the right. Here's the next part of the question. The force sensor measures the force acting on trolley Y during the collision. The laptop displays the following force time graph for the collision. We are then asked to determine the magnitude of the impulse on trolley Y. This is a fairly straightforward question because impulse can be calculated by finding the area under the force time graph. The area of this graph is just the area of this triangle. Half times the base times the height gives us 0 0.5 times 0 0.125. That's 125 milliseconds converted to seconds times 4, plus the area of this triangle. It has the same dimensions, so its area is also half times the base of 0 0.125 times the height of 4. The final answer works out to be 0 0.5 newton seconds. Part 2 of the question asks us to determine the magnitude of the change in momentum of trolley X. Remember that trolley X collides with trolley Y, and from Newton's third law, the force exerted on trolley Y by trolley X must be equal to the force exerted on trolley X by trolley Y. The length of time the force acts on trolley X must also be equal to the time the force acts on trolley Y. In other words, the magnitude of the impulse on trolley X 
must be equal to the magnitude of the impulse on trolley Y. That is 0.5 newton seconds. The impulse on an object is also equal to its change in momentum, so the magnitude of the change in momentum of trolley X must also be 0.5. Since this is a question about momentum, I've used the units kilograms meters per second, although newton seconds would also be accepted. Here's the final part of the question. Part 3 asks us to sketch a velocity time graph to show how the velocity of trolley X varies from 0.5 seconds before the collision to 0.5 seconds after the collision. Numerical values are required on both axes. So, first off, these are our axes. Velocity in the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Remember at the beginning of the question we were told that trolley X moves at 1.2 meters per second to the right, then rebounds with a velocity of 0.8 meters per second to the left. This means that our y-axis has to go up at least to 1.2 meters per second and down to at least negative 0.8 meters per second. Remember that we took right as the positive direction, which is why the final velocity is negative. For our x-axis, we have to graph from 0.5 seconds before the collision. The collision itself takes 250 milliseconds, which is 0.25 seconds. Then we need to graph the final 0.5 seconds after the collision. This gives us a total time of 1.25 seconds. The first 0.5 seconds is easy. We are told that trolley X is moving at 1.2 meters per second to the right. The final 0.5 seconds is also straightforward. We are told it rebounds with a velocity of 0.8 meters per second to the left, which we are taking as the negative direction. For the collision itself, for the first 125 milliseconds, that's 0.125 seconds, the force applied to trolley X increases. This would result in trolley X decelerating like so. The force acts in the opposite direction to the trolley's motion. As the force applied to trolley X increases, its deceleration increases also. So the gradient of the graph gets increasingly negative. After 125 milliseconds, the trolley is going to change direction, accelerating to the left, the negative direction. For the final 125 milliseconds of the collision then, you can see that the force applied to the trolley decreases, meaning that the gradient of the graph decreases in magnitude. When the force applied to the trolley decreases to zero newtons, it continues to move to the left at a constant velocity of 0.8 meters per second. Now, if you're on the ball, then you'll remember that we were told that the force sensor actually measures the force acting on trolley Y. From Newton's third law, however, the force acting on trolley X would be exactly the same, although in the opposite direction. And that, I'm afraid, is the end of our video. A tricky one, which you might want to watch more than once. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.